Maroon this evening, um, three delicious, beautiful wines, and three dishes, um, fancy, classy dishes. So uh, we are practicing. We're hoping that you can see us live and everything's working, the sound and all that. We've been playing with this for a few times here. Yay! <laughs>
so that'll be fun. Um, but who is JCB? JCB is John Charles Boisse. He is our owner, proprietor, president, personality extraordinaire. Um, and he has named his wines, he has a whole collection of wines under the JCB umbrella. So JCB 24 is a wine that he created just for the Boisset ambassadors. I am a Boisset ambassador. We are independent contractors. We just make, um, you know, try to bring these wines into people's homes and share them and, and make sure everybody that doesn't live in Napa and has access to these fantastic wineries up here can taste them. So I poured you girls some bubbles in your glass. Cheers. Cheers. Um, and the, I guess the first general rule of thumb is to think about um, when you're pairing food and wine, what time of year is it? So seasons, weather, right? Um, and then whether or not it's a casual, you know, daytime affair, is it an evening glamorous affair? So that's going to determine what you're going to want to pair, what you're going to want to do with the food, what you're going to want to do in your glass. Okay, great. So the JCB 24 is, are you getting ready to cook? Yeah, when, when you're ready. Like, <laughs> I just want to like, bet on well, She them. looks like she's ready with that I'm pan. ready. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so general rule of thumb, for example, today here in Napa Valley, it's 102 degrees. It's very, very hot. <laughs> so we're not going to have a big oaky red wine. Um, this time of year, we're going to try to do things that are a little bit lighter in body. Sparkling is perfect. Next rule of thumb, which all sommeliers know, everybody in the wine world knows, professionals know. If you have any doubt at all about what is going to pair well with the food, pop the bubbly because it always goes with everything, every single dish. And there's a reason for that. We're talking about pairing texture and carbonation and bubbles and all that good stuff. So JCB 24 in your glasses. Okay, so this is gonna be dry, very dry, bone dry, which is good. And it's made in the champagne method from Carneros. This is actually um, about half Chardonnay and half Pinot Noir. Yeah. So, cheers. And she's gonna cook a dish that's gonna pair beautifully with it. So one thing I want to, like, I love to give household tips and tricks. Um, when Christmas started talking, uh, and I, I put the pan on, and the, the flame came up, it was the, the, actually, because it is so hot, we have the air conditioning going on, it's full blast. I actually went over and turned the air conditioning down and turned it off, because what it does is it takes my flame away from the pan, and it's going to make it take longer. Same thing with the microwave with your or your your hood, your fan. It's actually if you have a ceiling fan on, it's actually going to make it take longer to cook. You're not going to get it that fast cooking that you're looking for. And I learned not the the hard way, I guess you would say, or the like I kept saying, why is this not working? Why is it? And I was like, and my flame was actually down. So right now my flame is right where I want it to be. And in this case, I want it to be really, really hot. And I don't want to um, crowd my pan. Sure, it cooks really, really fast, um, as we know. So we just want to cook it a little bit here until it turns white. Um, it's no longer gray, and it starts to turn white. And we're just going to keep tossing this around here as it cooks. And it really only takes, I want to say, maybe two minutes. Like, it really doesn't take long at all for this to get done. So. As I'm doing this, everybody's got champagne in their glass. You're getting ready for our wedges, right? Okay, I'm going to let that cook a little bit. What I've done here is I bought, have some butter lettuce leaves. You can uh, you can use any kind of lettuce that you want to. I happen to like these. They're so easy. And I just recently discovered, I don't know where I've been, but that live, where, that, where it looks like it's live and it's actually got the roots stuck to it. Um, they're so beautiful. They just, they just do really well. I put some lime wedges in here, um, so you can, oh, and hey, while I'm doing that, I will forgot, um, I need to make my crema. So this is my avocado cilantro crema, and I, in here I've got a couple of, I've got a, a green onion, about a half a cup of milk, a half a cup of um, sour cream, that's what I'm trying to reach you for. And this is one of my favorites. This is called Cavender's All-Purpose Greek Seasoning. Uh -huh. um, I like to, I always like to tell you, I like to have shortcuts. That's one of my shortcuts. When you have seasoning blends that you like, it cuts down on how many things you have to open and do, right? So we're going to do that. And, 
And then I've got some cilantro leaves, some of that. And I'm going to add this avocado. Here's my other blender. And I think my shrimp, I can even hear it getting that in there. stand up to that pressure. So think about, you know, we popped that cork. Lisa popped the cork for me tonight. She was a big helper. Um, so all that pressure in the bottle. There used to be bottles that just, they couldn't they couldn't hold the pressure. So now you've got bottles that hold up to the pressure. So has anybody taken a bite yet? <laughs> should we introduce our distinguished yeah, panel? Let's introduce our guests. I think we should introduce our distinguished panel. Yes. Like, so, you know, can you pan to our guests? <laughs> <laughs> can we take a bite? It would be the perfect right? time. Right? Can we take a bite? That's <laughs> right. That's the perfect time. Yeah. 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 I might need a little more sparkling. Oh, yeah. you know what? I got the surprise. Surprise. Yeah. So, yeah. let's get some carbon dioxide in your glass. <laughs> okay. That's awesome. So Cheers. Cheers. Yay. We've got the lovely so Yvonne. Much. Raise your glass, Yvonne. Yay, Happy to be here and doing your rock monster. <laughs> nice to see you, and it's delicious. I Yay. just took the first one. Yvonne's also a great cook. Yeah, yeah. Got Lisa. If anyone's watching this that I work with, I'm going to be back to work in an hour. <laughs> As is Allison. As is Allison. Yeah. Yeah. So it's yeah. always, it's always it's tough. Allison, one of my apartment mates. Yeah. And it's, it's always tough to do an event because we've got different time zones, right? So, yeah. you know, it's, it's trying to time it when people are actually able to drink or eat on the East Coast, and it's probably past dinner time there. Um, so we're glad if you tuned in tonight. And, um, and here on the West Coast, we decided to make it a little bit better. Yeah, so, but yeah. it's delicious. Yeah. These are fantastic. Yay! Yay. 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 Wow. It smells Yay. amazing in this kitchen. Does it? Oh, yeah. Yay. Yeah. Yay. Yay. Yay, that's awesome. And then we have got Nina doing the camera <laughs> here. Yay, the camera. Nina, <laughs> she put the camera and say, hi. She's running around, like, making things happen behind the scenes, and she wants we to stay behind the scenes. We have all kinds of support and help. It's we have the awesome. greatest friends. We appreciate yeah. it. <laughs> awesome. We're, we're so, you know, oh, here's another thing that John Charles always says about bubbles. Um, everybody always thinks that you only have champagne, sparkling wine, bubbles when it's a special occasion, right? Yeah, that's the only time you have bubbles. But John Charles says, when you pop the cork and you drink the bubbles, it becomes the occasion. So oh, I love that. Oh, I love that. I'm going to write that, that one down. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, I will say that this is awesome. Uh, this bubbly with this. Perfect, right? So, yeah. And you nailed it. Yeah. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Always time for bubbles. Okay, are we doing food? No. 
Okay, yes. I have a paper towel. Can you have what? Paper towel. Yes. I don't want to dirty it. Yes. That, that's what they are. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's what they are for. Um, I'm going to go a little bit out of order. I've got some onions and mushrooms heating up. I have already cooked them because I'm trying to keep this thing rolling along. But I've got something to do in the microwave, and I want to talk to you about our, our next course, our third course. I've got three and a half cups of chicken stock here, a cup of, this is cornmeal, that's all it is. This is, it, like, it doesn't oh, matter what brand, it doesn't matter, I'm making polenta. So I'm going to put my chicken stock, my polenta, my, what do you call it, and a quarter teaspoon or so. Uh, this is Herbes du Provence. I don't know if I'm mm -hmm. saying it correctly, but I'm getting kind of close there. And I'm going to stir that up with a whisk. Now, is it important to do white cornmeal? No, this is not white. But thank you for like pointing that out because it's actually not. Um, ah, that's for my my. I got to plug my microwave back. <laughs> <laughs>
So now I'm going to turn this off. Not that I want to cream this hot. <laughs> and I'm going to add two thirds of a cup of, this is a four cheese blend. Um, again, it's time saver so that you don't have to, you know, grate four different kinds of cheeses. You can get these four cheese blends. I got this one at Trader Joe's. They come, you can also get them at Costco and things like that. Or you can choose whatever cheeses you want. So see, what kind of mushrooms do you have in there? So these are cremini. Cremini is one of my favorites. You can use any type of mushrooms you like. I got it. I did it with white mushrooms the other day, and it was good. Um, but I prefer the cremini. And if you want to get gourmet, you want to go to the farmer's market and get fancy with some different kinds, you can do that as well. Just realized that's true. So I'm going to spread that around. I'm going to leave a space. The end it smells wonderful. Yay! I love that cheese. It's so good. And then I'm going to actually go up like this and I'm just going to crimp. So easy. It's not that I never make my own crust, but almost never because it just doesn't really make sense when it's that easy. Okay? It looks beautiful. And then to that, I have, I have one ready to serve you guys right now. So I'm gonna, this is an egg scrambled up with a little, just, you know, beat it, beaten with some water and a little bit of salt. That helps it to uh, be able to spread like that. That's my egg wash. This is coarse salt. I'm gonna pour a little bit out on my hand so that I have control over it. Sprinkle it on that. And I'm gonna pop it into a 400 degree oven. And when I've finished, it comes out looking like this. Mm. Wow. Uh, right? uh, this fits my hand, wow. right, like my board. board. And I started get on a rustic board. Again, I love that rustic look. Um, this is my. So let me real quickly here show you this before we go any further. I'm going to show you. So my broth, I can tell it's starting to heat up. And I'm just going to give it a stir. Right now it doesn't look like anything. So, but it's going to, so now I'm going to put it in for two more minutes. I think total tonight is probably going to take about 12 minutes. Maybe a little bit, give or take a little bit. So we're going to go right there. And where is my knife? because it's good like at room temperature. It doesn't have to be does not have to be super hard. But isn't that beautiful? Like, yeah, isn't that beautiful. easy? It's so easy. Why do you so make the parchment it, paper underneath like that? Because one thing makes it easy to come off like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mess up my board and it's just it an easy transfer. Mm -hmm. And I and I like because then it looks rusty. So yeah. <laughs> That's a good tip. Right oh, there you go. You're welcome. Thank you. Yes. There you go. Did you guys have a Yeah. Here's a few. Oh. I haven't tried anything yet. I don't know. Oh, I will nice. when we're done. I am okay, okay. busy observing. Okay. And I think you should have a small fork with your things here. Oh, yeah. You know what? I forgot to add a little bit of passing it up with just a little bit of extra parsley. Yes. Love it. There you go. Beautiful. Okay, who's ready for the next wine? We have um, wine glasses. We do, somewhere. They're right there. Oh there they are, God. behind here. Oh, I've got a little over there. Yay! Yay, let's see how it pairs with that next wine. Okay, so we're going to do a restaurant opening up. Okay, so shine me up. We're going to do our first 
red tonight, and this is going to be another JCB wine. This is JCB number 12. So there's a significance and a meaning to every number that JCB gives on his wines. I love knowing about that. Number 12 relates to the perfect amount of gifts at a dinner party. <laughs> <laughs> is that for real? In John, in John Charles' opinion, yes. Wow. It does. JCB 24, I was trying to find out the significance of that, and I was told a story just before I came over here from another ambassador, that when he first rolled this out as a, a wine for our um, ambassador program and just for the ambassadors, somebody asked him that, and he said, it's because all of his ambassadors are like 24 karat gold. Oh, oh that's so cute. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, but yes, JCB number 12. So this is going to be a Sonoma Pinot. Now, the important thing to know about this with food pairing is that this is made in the Burgundian style. So this is a very earthy, um, complex, really beautiful, elegant Pinot. And the Pinot is another one of those, those wines that can also be paired with a large variety of dishes. And why is that? It's because it's um, medium bodied, it's, um, it's very flexible. Um, you probably noticed that Pinot has a lot of mutations, right? So you can actually do do a Pinot Gris, you could do a Pinot Blanc, this is Pinot Noir. So this is gonna be your red wine. Um, so your second lesson for tonight on food and wine pairing, and this is a simple rule of thumb, is think about the uh, matching your food and wine with the um, intensity, and um, where does that come from in the texture? So the flavor profile and the texture. Uh, so where does that come from in food? Anybody guess where flavor and texture might come from in food? Okay. <laughs> Help us out here! No, it sorry, comes from the fat. It comes from the fat content in food. Oh, it does. Now, what you want to match that with, if you're trying to match that intensity and that That's fat. That's why non fat diets are so bland and <laughs> Well, if you're trying to match it, then what you're going to look for in a wine is you've got to have enough alcohol content to match the fat content. Mm -hmm. So, just a rule of thumb. If you've got a very lightweight dish, you don't want a big, heavy, alcoholic wine. If you have something that's got a lot of fat, then it's not going to taste great unless you, you pair it with a wine that's really got some alcohol, some alcohol to it. So, Pinot Noir from Sonoma County. I believe this is a 2019. Sorry, 16. Um, this is what we call an elegant Pinot, so we have a spectrum of style. Um, all of the pairings tonight came from a book that was written by John Charles and Marnie Old, who is our sommelier. I have a signed copy of this book. Of course I do. It's cool. She's a woman. Do do so many females. Well, and Marnie is great. So Marnie is actually full-time staff for us at the Ambassador Program. She's our go-to. There she is. She does a lot of content for us. She writes a lot of our... Um, descriptions. She comes up with a lot of our food pairings and our wine pairings. She does classes. She's got a huge presence on YouTube, so if you want to Google her, she's done some amazing things. And she really is old, O-L-D. She really tries to break everything down and make it very simple for you. So I would like to talk about her. So did you try a bite with the yes, pan yet? Absolutely. Yay. Perfect. Okay. So the only thing to be careful, the only thing to be careful about, um, I said Pinot goes with everything. The only thing it won't, won't go well with is if it's got too much sugar, or too much spice. Ah, so stick with that nice. middle of the road profile and you should be good to go. Delicious. Delicious. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Mia <laughs> 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 needs a glass too. Mia doesn't even have her sparkling yet. Yay. And he gives it a little salty bite with the cream and yeah. it really has a beautiful blend. Thank of you. Awesome. Not yet. Okay. There's your panel.
know, I told somebody of what we're making. I said, oh yeah, we're making this rustic tart. It's also known as a flint. And she's like, oh, that sounds hard. And I'm like, yeah, I love that. Because <laughs> I love it when things sound hard, but they're not, right? Because people, like, you just can impress your friends. Like, it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be big and fancy. It doesn't have to have 10,000 you know, like in ingredients in it, and it doesn't have to have lots of steps. It can be very simple. So um, it just sounds fancy. Yeah. So I like the fact that you can bring it at room temperature. So yes. it's a great thing to bring to a party. Oh, that's true. That's yeah, true. because you can cook Good. it at home. Yeah. So I want to show you. This is starting to our polenta here. Yeah, it's thickening. It's starting to thicken. So I'm actually ah, and it's getting really thick down in the bottom of it. So at this point. I'm going to be careful and probably put it in for like a minute or even 30 seconds at a time. So this is where, so you can see, almost could have like only done a minute there. So I'm having to really stir that up, but it's starting to thicken. And my goal tonight with the polenta, and we can turn the air conditioner back on. Um, <laughs> I'm not my goal, oh, my, 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 I'm sorry to feel. Um, my goal with the polenta tonight is to get it to a to get a consistency similar to mashed potatoes. That's how I'm going to be serving it. So um, it's it's a getting there. It's not quite there. I'm going to put it in for another minute, and we should be just about done at that point. And this is better than just doing it on the stove, just because you can kind of leave. Okay. It. The reason, yes. So. I've never even cooked polenta before. I bought the tubes and I made it that way and watered it down and all because to me it sounded hard because I when I read something it tells me how to do it and I have to stand there and stir constantly and avoid scorching. I'm out. Gotcha. I'm out. I'm like so I'm not even gonna attempt that. It. You can kind of do it while it is, I can do it, I hear a beep, I come back to it, I go back, and and it just works really well. So I've been making it now um, several times and I'm super excited because you can do so many different things with it. The next time I make it, I've decided I'm going to put, instead of what I put in tonight, because uh, I'm actually going to put a little bit of butter and some Parmesan cheese at the end to finish it off. So, uh, next time I want to do like a, a more of an Italian even version, which would be um, maybe some pesto and some pine nuts mm -hmm. and sun-dried tomatoes, something oh, like that. Delicious. But look how easy, like this is how easy it is. And you to buy it in the tube. Add the ingredients right in with the... So what I would do, like what I'm doing tonight later. is I'm doing it, you can do that too. It all depends on how you want to serve it. So if you wanted to serve it as a side dish, I would put it in a probably a fairly shallow dish, and then I would maybe add some pine nuts and some mm -hmm. extra drizzle, some extra on top, but I am going to actually put it inside. So, yeah. I love how versatile that is. Isn't it great? Yeah. <laughs> and then I've done, you know, other things where it's like fried, you know, you can keep it, you can refrigerate it. Okay, I think it's getting at that really nice consistency oh, there. And as it cools wow. a little bit, it will get even better, um, a little thicker. I'm going to put a couple tablespoons of butter in yeah, there. Butter. <laughs> <laughs> Never too much butter. That's and a quarter, a quarter that cup that. of Parmesan cheese or whatever cheese, but... Um, I like, I keep things on hand that I can make really quickly. And there we go. That's it. Wow. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. It's, it's so amazing. Easy. It's amazing. It's so I can't easy. believe you're single. <laughs> <laughs> Carrots, I'm not demonstrating how to do this, but I just put carrots and onion, garlic, 
and so I'm, and I stirred those around in my pots. I removed, I put, I cooked my meat right into this pot, took it out. You can do the same thing in the crock pot, but you'd have to have a pan. You'd have to do this part in the pan. I put my carrots, celery, and onion in the pot with the garlic, and I just um, stirred that around until it all got mixed up. Then put that in the bottom, kept that here, put my meat on top, added my broth, and a couple cups of red, uh, dry white wine, mm -hmm. and I put it in the oven. So you can put it in the crock pot. Well, it depends. So another one of those beautiful things. When I tried this last week, um, or a couple weeks ago for my kids, um, all of a sudden I needed to go show a property in Sacramento and it was cutting into the time my guests were coming over and I was like, okay, now what do I do? So perfect. I put it in the oven, everything was hot. I put it in the oven and at 225 instead of at 350 and it just cooked longer. So again, that's what a crock pot does. Right, very flexible, very forgiving. So um, what I've done, to, that's, so today, I needed to get as many things done earlier today as I possibly could, so it kind of did the same thing. But if you wanted to just do it all at once, it would take, at 350, it would take about three hours. So a couple things about short ribs. I was unfamiliar with them. They sounded hard, they sounded like something special. Um, the first time I purchased them recently was at the farmer's market, and I highly recommend that you go to a butcher or a farmer's market to purchase your short rib. Because what you want is you want to get them, especially if you're serving you know, people where everybody's gonna have their own plate and you want them to look really pretty, you want them to be the same size and thickness about. I went to a store recently, the other day and I said, do you have some? He said, well, I can cut you some. And some had almost no meat at all and some had, and so they just, they weren't okay for me, right? So then I had to go buy some more. So now what I did with those ones that don't have any meat on them is, this is kind of crazy, but I really do this. Um, I baked them today while well, this was in the oven, but I baked them just by themselves with some salt and pepper. And I'm actually going to, and I just baked them a long, long time, let that fat come off. Now I'm gonna put them in a, in a soup pot and I'm gonna make some beef stock out of it. So I'm not gonna let those little pieces with no real meat on them that I wouldn't serve a guest go to waste, but if you go to a butcher and you tell them exactly what you want, you're gonna get what you want. You're not gonna get these you know, funky little pieces. So what I've got here, I let it cook for a long time and then I took the lid off the last hour or so. What my carrots and celery and onion do is it creates a place for it to rest on because we want the meat to sit kind of on the oh, top, not God. completely covered. Your guests are very I'm nice. so <laughs> here. <laughs> I know, right? I'm so excited. Yay, I love it. I love it. It's so And I also am excited about what I'm serving them in. Um, this is my new favorite dish. I'm going to take so I'm going to serve you here real quickly. So I used to have some pasta bowls. They were called pasta bowls. Um, and over the years, over the last 35 years or whatever, they have gotten broken. So we have none left. But we used to like, use those all the time. Another trick I want to show you is you can, to heat up your plate so that your, or your bowls, so that they are at the same temperature or close to it, so they're not gonna get your food cold. I like to put them in the microwave real quickly like that. You, um, you have a warming time. Susie, you are getting so many tips that. Yay! I will take with me. Yay. Yay, valuable. So because I'm serving, the meat is really rich. Polenta's got quite a bit of flavor in it. I like to keep my vegetables really kind of neutral without a lot. So I just cook these green beans and a little bit of beef broth. Um, I add some salt pepper and that's all I'm going to do to them because I think that that's enough. Okay. Um, I think our plates should go ahead and just wanted to show you that in case you hadn't seen it before. I can't believe I never thought that before. <laughs> so I want to do. do you want to go ahead and talk about our next wine, Kristen? Sure. I was just uh, answering questions.
questions on our, oh, our um, page. So, um, awesome. And I was going to cover this at the end, but very important question. Yes. Everybody is salivating. Um, I know you're going to post the recipes with asking how they can get these wines. So we did offer the wines before the event on the website, so you could have had them in your glass right now. <laughs> Just saying. However, um, they're still available. So uh, I have a website. It's myboissecollection.com. Boisset is spelled B-O-I-S-S-E-T. Everybody is confused by that, but it's French, so what do you expect? Um, myboissecollection.com forward slash Kristen.cook, and we're going to put it in the comments. So it's under tasting experiences. We have a bunch of different flights, everything from two to four to six bottles of wine that you can buy, all different price ranges. Um, you get to click on each bottle and understand the description of each wine. It's about every price point you can think of, every occasion you can think of. So. Um, and about 150 wines to choose from. So it can be a little overwhelming. Feel free to reach out to me. I'm happy to guide you on the website. But that's how you get the wines. Are you guys done with your Pinot? Because I am going to pour you our next wine to go with this amazing dish. And this is going to be a Cabernet. And even more special is this is a Cabernet from Raymond Vineyards. And I work at Raymond Vineyards in your tasting room. So I'm your hostess with the most of Yay! 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 <laughs> days a week. It's great fun. It's my retirement <laughs> gig. I highly recommend it. My daughter goes retirement goals, mom. I'm like, yeah, sure. So uh, I moved here about three years ago and met all these wonderful ladies since then. Didn't know Soul in Napa Valley and happened on Raymond Vineyards through my landlord. So thank you, Kirk. Appreciate it. Kirk <laughs> gave me the opportunity to meet with um, the fabulous Bill Farmer up at Raymond Vineyards. If you've never been to the Raymond property, it's amazing. And I'm not, I'm not biased. It truly, truly has about seven different tasting rooms, many different experiences that you can choose from when you're there. So different wines in every room. Um, red room, a lot of people come in, they're like, I want to see that room that's full of red velvet, right? So that's a room on the property that, um, I don't know, looks kind of Vegas-y. Um, awesome. Vegas or, awesome. or Bordello, one of the two. Um, <laughs> but it's leopard and red it's velvet. Destination. And it's, yes. Yeah. And you can you can um, take some friends in there. You can hang out for a couple hours, drink the wine. Um, it's the only par part of the property that's bottle service, so uh, that's pretty fun. But that's enough about Raymond. Um, I'm going to give you your third tip for tonight um, from the sommeliers. So every sommelier um, knows that. Uh, oh my gosh, I'm blanking. Let me talk about the wine first, and I'll give you my tip because I'm already just going. I got some wine too, so you know this is. Uh, <laughs> Uh, oh, I got it. I got it. As soon as I looked at the meat, I knew it. Yes. So what you want to do is think about not just the main <laughs> ingredient that you're pairing, but how is it cooked? Mm. And Susie gave a great demonstration and explanation oh, about yes. grazing. Yes. So if you've got a meat that is grilled or braised mm. or roasted, then you want to match that with a wine that's full of oak and it's heavy and it's got a lot of body and it's aged a little bit. Um, so I'm going to use the example of salmon. If Susie had made salmon tonight, she could have grilled salmon. If she grilled the salmon or roasted it, then she would have also served something that was a little bit heavier, more substantial, maybe not a cow, but something with some, you know, um, some body to it. But if she had poached that salmon or had it raw, then you want something that's not oak to something that's very lightweight. So think about how you're cooking the food. Sommeliers know this. So when they're um, hired at a restaurant and they're trying to pair food and wine, that's what they're going to look at. So grazing so stands up beautifully to a cabinet. So what do you think? Was that yeah. as yeah. 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 It's bright. It's gorgeous. Yes. 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 All I did was throw some, yeah. throw some oh, fresh, a couple of sprigs of fresh thyme on the top and a couple of sprigs of rosemary. And I literally yeah. left it in the oven all that time. And it oh, just kept yes. cooking. And it shouldn't just fall off the bone. So. It's a picture. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. So you can take a, a little sip of really your calf. Nice. You can take a bite of food, a sip of your calf. Wow. And we'll, we'll ask our expert oh panel gosh, of bone judges bone here what oh they think God. about the pairing. It just, it just, it just literally fell off. It should. Yeah. It's okay. okay. Like, I just had to show the fork to <laughs> the <laughs> yeah. We don't need these knives for anything. But I know. Anybody. I served steak knives with them recently. Oh like, we don't need this.
and my wine on the stove and then put it into a 225 degree oven or 250, depending on how many hours you want to cook. That's fabulous. Yay! You like it? Oh my yes. gosh. That's awesome. Yes. How many people are going to go home and make this recipe now? Yes, yes, yes. My yes. little yeah. salt yeah. pepper. Your dual. My dual thing. I like the dual. Yeah. So, that's awesome. So, this cab actually has a little uh, cab frog, a little Merlot, and a little Petit Verdot. However, it's still primarily Cabernet Sauvignon. That's why they put it on the label. It does um, come from up in St. Helena. So, Raymond Vineyards, right in the heart of Napa Valley. Um, make beautiful calves. Roy Raymond started the vineyard in 1970, so um, been making calves a long time. And John Charles just bought the property in 2009, so he's pretty much kept the Raymond um, traditions. Um, this is one of my favorite calves too, the Signature Collection. This isn't a hugely expensive wine for Napa, I think it's $58. Yeah. So, so you would pay a lot more for that. And of course we have the high-end wine. But for this experience tonight, I thought let's get some fairly reasonable. You know, this Pinot is maybe in the thirty-something dollar range, thirty-two dollars. Um, the sparkling is beautiful and bubbly and special, so I think it's probably more expensive than the cab, actually. Um, is it your standard pricing or member pricing? So that's the standard pricing, but you want to You're out out point. Point. <laughs> I love it. We, we have some, we have some <laughs> society members here tonight. Yes. Um, or a you do. collector. Yeah, I do. Yeah. So you can um, you can join the, the wine society or the Raymond Club if you go visit the property and it's 20% off all the wines. If you're a wine society member on my site, we do amazing sales all the time. Sometimes you're getting wine for 50% off, 30% off. So um, look for those sales. Sometimes free shipping, but you yeah. know we're all kind of used to ordering things now and having it delivered to our doors. I love it. So um, wine is no different. You know, you, a lot of people tell me they get so intimidated when they go to the stores and trying to figure out. I mean, not so much here in Napa because everybody knows wine, but um, my friends back home or my friends that I used to live in Florida, I used to live in Texas, I used to live a lot of places, and they all say, "Oh my gosh, I, I get you know paralyzed when I'm in the wine aisle. Like, what am I buying?" And so we kind of take that um, that little guesswork out. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for yeah. being here with thank us you. this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks thank for our guests. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. and buys wine and gets recipes. Okay. Oh, and recipes, by the way. Yeah. Now, it's going to take a couple days for me to get them, but I will get them up onto the Facebook site. And we also have a website that I'm, it's still not completely correct the way I want it to be, um, but I'll put them up there as well, and they'll be on my Classes In website. Um, my computer is at the computer doctor, so I wasn't able to actually <laughs> type them up the way that I wanted to. Yet, but I will have them all up there for you. And I go into great detail. And of course, you're always welcome to email me and ask me questions or call me and ask me questions if there's something that you know you want to know how I did it or you know could you could you substitute this instead of that and things like that. So just happy to help you with that. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Thank yeah. you. Guys. Yeah.